Okay, so this package only took 14 days to arrive, which is considerably faster than uh, what our post service normally takes to deliver things from China. But it was sent via EMS, so I guess that helps. Uh, let's unpack it. So a lot of plastic as always. Okay, 2000 watt, 4000 watt max inverter. It's on 12 volts, I highly doubt it will be able to do that, but whatever. And they sent me a Australian power cord for some reason. Oh well, I guess I can replace that with something else. Instruction manual of some sort. Thick power cables, glad to see that. And let's get this out. Bag with some spare fuses, which is much appreciated. Let's get this stuff out of the way and can actually have a look at the unit. Okay. So here's the actual unit. Um, here's my hand for size comparison. So it's not very big. It says it can do 2000 watts. I doubt it. Um, uh, the, this metal piece here is bent, and maybe that's shipping, maybe that's poor manufacturing quality, I don't know. Let's look at the top. So at the top I've got a small LCD screen here, a battery voltage indicator and two multi-UK type of plugs. I've got a UK plug here, let's see. Yeah, your standard UK plug will fit into it. Fantastic. And on the other side, you've got your positive and negative terminals and your AC input. So the nice thing about this UPS unit, or the nice thing about this inverter unit is that it can also act as a UPS, which means it can charge the battery when there is AC power and it will create AC power when there is no grid power available. So this is quite nice for things like South Africa where we often don't have grid power due to um, lack, lack of uh, supply. And I think this, this will come in quite useful. So this is the 12 volt model. And let's open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so I only removed the top screws on the one side because this housing should just come apart. I hope. Sort of. Okay, it sort of just comes apart. Okay, so the construction quality isn't the best, obviously, um, but I guess it will do. Uh, this is the inside. You can see the DC to DC converter that takes a 12 volts and pumps it up to uh, around 400 volts. And then this section here is the uh, SPWM pure sine wave. Um, basically, it's an audio amp, a D class audio amp that creates our AC waveform. Um, one thing I'm not very keen on is the fact that they use the same color wire for live and neutral. That is quite annoying. And the other thing is this wire is quite thin. Like you, you won't be able to pull 2000 watts through this wire. Um, it will heat up like something crazy. So here at the bottom you have your LC um, filters to take away the shop switching noise from the SPWM and convert into a nice sine wave. Uh, over here we've got a SP SPWM controller board. Um, uh, these are quite generic, you can find them online. So these capacitors are 
chunks branded. Apparently 105 degrees C, but I highly doubt that. It's supposed to be 35 volts, 3,300 microfarads. These big uh, MOSFETs or IGBTs will form the H bridge that does the SPWM. And then you've got a few of these trans transistors or MOSFETs. They will probably be responsible for the DC to DC conversion. So like I said, there are two of these boards. Um, don't know what this one does. This one looks similar to the uh, SPWM modules you can find online. Uh, I'll quickly try and read that uh, model number for you. That I think is the main processor. It's an EG, EG8010IC. Uh, it's probably some dedicated controller. This board over here only has a LM324 op amp and something else. I can't really see that right now. But I think there's just some analog circuitry. And you've got your buzzer here at the middle to warn if there's an issue. So just one last note that I really don't like. Other than the fact that they use exactly the same color cable for both live and neutral apparently everywhere. Um, the earth on this IUC connector is not connected. As are the earth terminals on the um, UK sockets. So this thing is not earthed at all, which I must say is quite concerning. So I guess I'll put in an earth cable for that um, so that it will at least trip the circuit breaker when it's connected to mains power. Um, but yeah, let's plug this in and see if it works. So let's connect it to the bench power supply and see what happens. It's pulling 1.2 amps at 12 volts just by being powered on. Okay, without any load, let's see how much power, how much volts this thing gives. So 220 volts, which is fine. So this is a 250 watt quarter horsepower motor. And let's see if the inverter is actually powerful enough to run it. As you can see, this unit actually has no issue running this uh, job. Let's have a look at the current meter on it. Okay, so that current meter says absolutely nothing. And I think that voltage sensor also says absolutely nothing. But this inverter runs this draw quite fine, which is a good thing. Okay, so now it's, it's plugged into the wall. So turn it off. You can see it switches over, makes a weird ding sound when that happens. So let's see if it can actually power the draw from the mains and let's see what happens when the mains fails. So let's turn on drill again. Okay, so it actually does what it's, it does mostly what it says it can do, but this is only 250 watts. Okay, so that the previous load, this motor was a 250 watt unit. This halogen floodlight, or sorry, propol spot to be more specific, is a 500 watt lamp. And let's see if it can handle it. So currently it's still on the mains connection. Okay, so let's see what happens when we switch over to battery power. So it doesn't appear to have any issues running the spotlight from the batteries, which is great. Now let's see if it can run that spotlight and the drill at the same time. Okay, it doesn't appear to have any issues doing that. So the next thing I want to test uh, with this inverter is whether it's powerful enough to start the 
HID bulb in this HMI uh, 600 watt moving headlamp. Now, this isn't something I expect people to normally have in their house, but I do for some reason. Um, but this is a good test since starting that bulb takes a lot of current. So let's see if the inverter is able to power it. Let's first remove it from the let's first remove it from the wall. And let's see. Okay, well, it's not liking it. Okay, so I wouldn't really recommend this, but the inverter can power this bloody powerful light. So since this is only um, about 600 watts, let's add the profile spot and see what happens. Okay, so currently the inverter is powering about a thousand, I'd say a thousand, a thousand, one hundred, thousand, two hundred watts. And it doesn't appear to have much of an issue with it, except that the battery voltage is draining quite quickly. Okay, let's do this. So I'm now going to leave this unit overnight to charge the two 65 amp hour batteries. They're both just connected in parallel. Um, so the reason I didn't push this thing to its 2000 watt maximum limit is because I only have two 63 amp break, uh, two 63 amp breakers in parallel and, uh, the breakers would probably trip at around 1300 watts ish, 1500 maybe. I don't know. My math's not very good at the moment. So, and another thing is those wires that I showed you earlier uh, definitely are not thick enough to be able to handle 2000 watts. But I'm glad to see it handled 1000, 1100, 1200 quite well. If this voltmeter is to be believed, the batteries are charging. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, feel free to subscribe, and I'll probably post another video where I show how to properly earth the inverter so that it's actually safe for like normal use and yeah have a great day